Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling Clusterfuck Review, where we are going to cover about a dozen different albums in uh, just over an hour. And not enough time to do it all in, that's why it's a clusterfuck. <laughs> We've got a lot of albums to get through and not really much time to actually cover them all, so let's just get things underway. Uh, we've got four sections, J-pop, electronica, rock, and metal. And um, when this gets uploaded, it will be uploaded as those four chunks. So... Do you know, anyone that, you know, watches those things is going to realise it's in four chunks before they actually watch it, bro? Right? Mm. But anyway, <laughs> none more for that. <laughs> we've got to get going. Um, Let's go, 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 go. <laughs> right, so first off, the J-pop. Uh, because I basically said I need to get I need to vent my spleen about the albums that Pierce recommended for this section <laughs> so first off and I'm glad that this is the first album because I get to rage at Pierce for the next 10 minutes because of this absolute dreck too fair I mean he did say to me that he sounded it's worse than Nickelback because there's only two mediocre songs on it which therefore makes me think, you must think more than three needed Nickelback songs are better than mediocre? <laughs> Fortunately, Ed has now been sent off to the vet to be set put down for liking Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna let you say the name of the band because I'm never quite sure how to fucking say it. <laughs> me, 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 me. Or Beaker, as I've been referring to them as. Because th that's the easiest way I can say it. So, because to me, I, I read the name and it goes, me, 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 me. <laughs> well, yeah, I had a feeling you wouldn't like this. So, I'm not entirely surprised. Oh, God, this fucking album! Fuck this fucking album in its motherfucking asshole! <laughs> uh, it's always fun with Ed Rages. This is partially the reason why I gave it to him. <laughs> I, I mean, my notes for this fucking album were fuck, fuck, fuck. It's okay. <sighs> Sounds like generic idol pop. Fuck! Oh my god, this is the most generic J pop song I've ever heard in my life. Track 8 and track 4 are the only two songs on this album I enjoyed. Track 9, fuck! Track 10, fuck! Track 11. <laughs> and track 12, see response to track 11. <laughs> I was kind of surprised that track 8 was one of the ones I stood out to you, considering it's very um, minimalist, kind of. Well, one of my favourite Ramstein songs is Loss, and can't get more Loss. minimalist for Ramstein than that, can you? Well, the self-titled Ramstein track on the line is pretty minimalist as well. Mm. Yeah, I like this album, so I would say it's not as good as their first album, but it's still pretty decent. This is their second. <laughs> if this isn't as good as their first album, then I hate, I'd hate i hate to hear their first album. Well, not Probably you hate it slightly less because it's a better album, I guess, maybe. <laughs> also, if you think this is, I mean, some of the stuff is more generic than others, but if you think this is like super generic, you probably haven't listened to Minutes J Pop because. <laughs> so I thought that was far worse than this. I just... I was listening through it and it's all... I actually had to take a break from listening to this album because I was getting so aggravated by how interminably annoying I found so much of this album. I mean, it's not that I found it generic, I found it just fucking annoying! <laughs> I mean, when I say well, that... It actually does... Hmm? No. When I say that track 5 sounds like generic idol pop, I meant that in that it quite literally so sounded like something that any idol band could have performed. Hmm, it's listening to track 5 right now, and honestly the only band I think I've ever heard that this sounds even remotely similar to is Super Soul. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, what brand of J-pop does this actually fall into? It's just J-pop. There's nothing special about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just... Ugh. It was annoying for me. It was an annoying album. I mean, my score kind of reflects how pissed off I was by the album. I mean, might as well say what 
what our respective scores was. I mean, well, Piers, what was your score? Some, um, probably a three. That's way higher than I gave it. Why well, doesn't I go and sit here and wear my Mimi 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 t-shirt? Because I can. I gave this album a 0.5 out of 5. And at that time, I felt like I was being far too generous with my scoring. Because when only one of those songs I would actually happily return to, and another I found mediocre, and the rest I despised or found interminably dull, I, I couldn't give it any higher than 0 0.5. This is why I just wanted you to listen to Nanahira, because I reckon you probably end up giving it like a, a minus three, maybe? I, Based on what your opinions on this are? Maybe I will. <laughs> Soon enough you'll see a video of you of Ed, after listening to the album, just killing himself. Why would I kill myself? You're the one that suggested it! <laughs> Yeah, I suggested it, but you probably want to kill Rich because he's the one that's a fan of Nana Hera. Yeah, but I mean, killing myself, that would be curing the symptom, not the cause. <laughs> anyway, should we move on? Yeah, moving on. Emma, Emma. I don't know how it's pronounced. It's Emma, I think. It's based on French, so... I, I, I know very little French. I learnt Spanish, for Christ's sake. I know very little of most languages, honestly. Um, now, Emma... Um... Well, as I mentioned before, this album is almost... Almost every single track here is either collaboration vocally or writing and um, musician-wise, so... It's not necessarily the same as what the usual stuff is. I, I will say this much. Um, I definitely like more songs on this album, even by virtue of there being one more song on the album than the previous... than the Beaker album. Even by virtue of that, I liked more, because it's a difference of like actually liking one and actually liking five. Let's see what songs you liked, actually. Well... I really liked Insane Dream. Um, the thing is, when, when I first played it, I was sort of like, did I accidentally put some Lacuna Coil? <laughs> yeah, I guess I can do that. Good Lacuna Coil, I will hasten to add. Yeah, Lacuna Coil kind of went a bit off-kilter after like, the first three albums. <laughs> I haven't heard the newer stuff, but what I have heard of like, anything after that has been either mind-numbingly dull or just not very good. <laughs> I've really liked their last two albums, so... I'll check them out at some point. Yeah. Um, I mean, I actually bought their last album, which came out this year. <laughs> it was one of those annoying things of, ah, oh, shit, this came out this year, could have reviewed it. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of... I got into them, I saw them live a couple of times, and then Comico came out, and it just completely disappointed me. I was like, oh, I just never went back after that. I actually liked Karma Code myself, but... Every song sounded pretty much the exact same. Yeah. But none the more for that, we're talking about Emma. Emma, whatever! Daydream! We'll just refer to it by the album name. That I know how to pronounce. Yeah, that'll do. Um, next, uh, after that, I read the second track. I, I don't know most of the, tit the names of the tracks, but... Track 2, I thought it was a pretty cool J-pop kind of thing. Um, not much more to say on it. Uh, but after that Two-Face, then I thought, is this suddenly Red Hot Chili Peppers or something? <laughs> some, some intro bass line. Yeah. Um, track 7, uh, that actually um, reminded me of For You by Ri Fu. Oh, by Ri Fu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can hear that. Um, track nine, I, you know, when you have that one song that you sort of like bits of this I like, bits of this I can't quite gel with. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I really liked when it was had the stripped down feel of it. Um, I I could have done without the drums, as strange as that might sound. Yeah, I fair enough. I wasn't quite a fan of the drumming. Um, 
closer. Oh, I forgot to say um, with track nine, it kind of remind ah, it kind of reminded me of Tori Amos to a certain extent. Okay, I mean to listen to Tori Amos. <laughs> um, that's a, if if we were to go female artists that I really like, Tori Amos would be in like the top five. Coincidentally, when it comes to female artists, I really like Emma is in my top two. So yeah. <laughs> um, closer. Uh, I really liked it. Actually, for me, it had a bit of a hailstorm vibe to it. Not ale storm, hailstorm. Hailstorm. Yeah, I have heard hailstorm. I think I've got more hailstorm on him than I do hailstorm at the moment. That's just <laughs> I've seen them live, and they put on a really nice. great show. Uh, they were part of the um, Carnival of Madness with Blackstone Cherry, Shine Down, and live. huh? I've seen Blackstone Cherry live, yeah. That was the second time I'd seen them live. The first time was actually when I won a competition. <laughs> it was one of those. What? Wait, I won. Cool. I I'd forgotten I'd even entered. <laughs> and um, Falling Alone, I really liked. Um, it put me in mind of a few bands, but I can't rightly put my finger on who. Anything else? Uh, those were the main ones. Um, well, interestingly enough, Insane Dream, Closer, and Falling Alone are all are three out of the four songs that were composed by Tucker from 1AK Rock. Alright. <laughs> so there's, there's only four songs in time by him that composed, and he did three other ones you just mentioned. <laughs> what was the fourth so, one? Uh, I think it was Stars in the Rain. Which track's that? Last one. Ah. Oh yeah, I, I that actually bored me. I think that's probably my least favorite song on the album. So yeah. I I just I sort of like, eh, it's technically competent, but that that's I think that's the most damning thing that you can say about a song. <laughs> it's a good song, but it doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, for me, uh, well, track nine and us track twelve are both done by TK from Link to City Chigari. Hmm. Who we saw at Hyper Japan. Ah. And Us is a very, very strong container for my favourite song of this year. I fucking love that song so much. Whereas my note here is meh! Whole pile of meh! Big old bag of meh! Well, Linda and Shigure are a very kind of niche kind of sound to them, I think. Mm. I can imagine that you either really, really like them or you just don't care. <laughs> it's got a very kind of specific kind of. It's kind of math rocks set up with their stuff, so mm. it's very hit and miss. But um that's not the album. When I first heard it I was didn't catch it that much, but after a couple more listens it's kinda of grown in me a lot, so I'll probably give it a four point five, maybe a four point eight even. If it wasn't for if it starts in the rain was a bit better, I'd probably give it a straight out of five. Mm. Whereas my total score was two out of five. It's surprisingly low considering you liked like half the songs. Less than half. That was thirteen. Yeah. I liked five. Yeah, I suppose. That makes sense. <laughs> Once again, I'd say probably isn't her best album, but it's up there with the rest of them, I'd say, at least most of the way up there. The thing is, I think the thing that I really, that's what I is, I absolutely fucking love her voice. Just, I just like, ah. Oh. That's why was voice voices just kind of get to you and you just fall in love with it. This is exactly what I get from her. Fair enough. I, I can only comment my impressions for this album and... Right, moving on, I guess. Yeah, next album, Valkyrie, which is a really lame ass pronunciation of Valkyrie. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, this band technically doesn't exist, for one. What? <laughs> Well, they're actually, you know, they're a fictional idol group that existed in Macross Delta, so... Obviously, the singers are real, and they have performed lives, but... Uh, so is it a bit like, um... Is it a bit like Detroit Metal City in that respect? Yeah, that kind of thing. Or the Batman Metal Metalocalypse, for example. Mm. You know, the, the fictionally don't exist, but they do exist in the real one. Obviously, they do sing live, but the main focus is on them as characters within the show. Yeah. Um, now, this album... Uh... Most of it, I was, you know, I got along with it. Um, the tracks that st stood out to me, uh, track four, uh, 
Oh, the other, the other the intro to that. Mm. The funky ass intro. Couldn't quite place what it reminded me of, but it's definitely more my bag. Um. Mm. Also worth noting that that is one of the main girls in the show, um, Mikome. Her voice actress has a really, really deep voice, and I love it. <laughs> and that's, that number that four is one of her solo songs, so. Yeah. I think I mentioned probably at least like a couple of other things before that I, I love female singers with really deep voices. Yeah. Track six also reminded me of something, but I can't fucking think what. But I did <laughs> enjoy it. That that's that's the frustrating thing. It's sort of like some of these songs I go, what does this remind me of? Um, of course, the one that stands out on the bad side is track nine. The only note I've got here is fuck. I actually included that in the album. I would have thought it would appear on the soundtrack rather well, than actually on the standalone release album. One, now, the last track on the album really bugged me because it sounded like what would happen if you took a 90s boy band, you know, that sort of style, and mixed it with Somewhere That's Green from Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> I had not thought of that, but I could totally hear that. Yeah, th- 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 this backing track does kind of make me think a bit of, like, Backstreet Boys or something. Hmm. It was just one of those, why am I listening to Backstreet Boys <laughs> with female vocalists? I don't know, but I can totally see it. But that's it. If, if you did enjoy this album, I'd check out the first Wackery album as well. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all pretty damn good shit. Well, the first album was Giraffe Blues, which is one of the best songs in the show. And it's freaking amazing vocals. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't e- even be in like, my top 20 for this year. But I did enjoy it. Hmm, it's a pretty solid, um... Also, just the fact that the Queen cover art is just a bunch of just J-pop idols dodging lasers for no apparent reason. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a really weird cover. But yeah, uh, probably 3, 3.5 out of 5 for me. Yeah, 3 out of 5 for me. It's decent. Above average, as you say. Hmm. Unfortunately, being above average is not that great when there's so many things that are above average. Most things we're doing in this entire review are going to be above average. Yeah. <laughs> Because there's so bloody much of it. In fact, the next two albums are going to be above average. Yep. <laughs>